watchfulness the essential dimension of inner growth our inner self is like an empty apartment that apartment can be rented by a christian hindu buddhist or for that matter person of any religious faith when he comes to the apartment it is empty then according to his own belief system he starts decorating it then it becomes a hindu home or christian home or something else and when that person leaves the apartment it is once again without any religious belief such is the case of the innerness i had spoken from time and again how sage dattatre attained to 24 masters he is a hindu mystic i am not interested much in his parentage but is still just for the matter of information he is considered to be the incarnation of trinity of hindus the three aspects the creation preservation and destruction these are the three aspects of creation which hindus have termed as brahma the creator vishnu the preserver and shiva the destroyer this is very scientific he had started his spiritual training at a very early age when he was a child he went on a long pilgrimage and there he attained he lived in north of karnataka traveled through maharashtra andhra pradesh and gujarat as far as the river narmada he attained realization in a town and thereafter he went on the mountain gilnar where he did his meditation when he returned it happened a king visited the family parents were not at home so the king saw something magnanimous in the boy so he asked the boy questions you have been studying with your parents dattatre said there is much to learn from everyone and everywhere that surrounds us not only from our parents as is normally considered then the king inquired do you have a master and if so who it is dattatre replied i have 24 masters the king astonished 24 masters at this tender age who are they he inquired dattatre said mother earth is my first master she taught me to hold those who trample me scratch me and hurt me lovingly in my heart just as she does she taught me to give them my best because people walk on the earth they trample they dig they do all kinds of things but earth never retaliates she taught me to give them my best remembering that their acts are normal and natural from their standpoints they cannot do anything otherwise who is your second master the king inquired dattatre said water water is a force that contains life and purity it has the quality to purify anything that comes in its contact it cleanses whatever it touches and provides life to whosoever drinks it provides life to human beings to plants to animal kingdom water flows unceasingly if it stops 
it becomes stagnant. Keep moving is the lesson that I learn from water. Flow is the way of life that I learn from water. Your third guru, fire. It burns everything, transforms it into flame. It transforms baser metal into precious one. By consuming dead logs, it produces warmth and light. Thus I learned. Absorb everything that life brings and how to turn it into flame. This flame enlightens my life and in that life, others can walk safely. This is what I learned from fire. Who is your fourth master, sir? The king inquired. Wind is my fourth guru. Wind moves unceasingly, touching flowers and thorns alike, but never attaches itself to the objects it touches. Like the wind, I learned not to prefer flowers over thorns or friends over foes. Like the wind, my goal is to provide freshness to all without becoming attached to anyone. This is the quality of a being. The fifth guru, the curiosity of the king increased, was full of wonder. Dattatre replied, this is all pervading and all embracing a space in my a space. That is my fifth guru. A space has room for the sun, moon, the stars, and yet it remains untouched and unconfined. I too must have room for all the diversities because sun, moon, Stars, they are all diversities. Sun is a source of heat. Moon is a source of coolness. The stars have their own life. I too must have room for all the diversities and still remain unaffected by what I contain. All visible and invisible objects may have their rightful place within me, but they have no power to confine my consciousness. A master is one who can speak with equal clarity on anything that he is asked or asked to explain. Who is your sixth guru? The moon. The moon waxes and wanes and yet never loses its essence totality or shape. From watching the moon, its phases change from new moon to full moon. Its size keeps on changing, but its quality, essence never changes. From watching the moon, I learned that waxing and waning, rising and falling, pleasure and pain, Loss and gain are simply phases of life. While passing through these phases, I never lose awareness of my true self. This is the quality of one who can discern right from wrong. And such a person can learn from every person and every circumstance or situation that comes your way. And this is how I want each one of you to be. Who is your seventh guru? The sun is my seventh guru. With its bright rays, the sun draws water from everything, transforms it into clouds, and then distributes it as rain without favor. Rain falls equally on the forests, mountains, valleys, deserts, oceans and cities. Like the sun, I learned how to gather knowledge from all sources, transform that knowledge into practical wisdom and share it with 
all without preferring some recipients and excluding others. And use eighth guru. My eighth guru is a flock of pigeons. One pigeon fell into the hunter's net and cried in despair. Other pigeons tried to rescue it and got caught too. From these pigeons I learned that even a positive reaction, if it springs from attachment and emotion, can entangle and ensure. It creates bondage. Even positive reaction, even a positive reaction, if it springs forth from attachment and emotion, can entangle and ensure. Your ninth guru, my ninth guru is the python who catches and eats its prey and then does not hunt again for a long time. It taught me that once my needs has been met, I must be satiated and not make myself miserable running after the objects of my desire. Who is your tenth guru? The ocean, which is the abode of all waters, it receives and assimilates water from all the rivers in the world and never overflows its boundaries. It taught me that no matter what experiences I go through in life, no matter how many kicks and blows I receive, I must maintain my discipline. And your eleventh guru, O wise one, the moth is my eleventh guru. Drawn by light, it flies from its dwelling to sacrifice itself in the flame. It taught me that once I see the dawn, I must overcome my fear, soar at full speed and plunge into the flame of knowledge to be consumed and transformed. The twelfth, my twelfth guru is a bumblebee who takes only the tiniest drop of nectar from the flower before accepting even that much. It hums and hovers and dances, creating an atmosphere of joy around the flower. It not only sings the song of cheerfulness, it not only sings the song of cheerfulness, it also gives more to the flower than it takes. It pollinates the plants and helps them prosper by flying from one flower to another. I learned from the bumblebee that I should take only a little from the nature and I should do so cheerfully, enriching the source from which I received sustenance. Your thirteenth guru? My thirteenth guru is the honey bee that collects more nectar than it needs. It gathers nectar from different sources, swallows it, transforms it into honey, and brings it to the hive. It consumes only a bit of what it gathers, sharing the rest with others. Thus I should gather wisdom from the teachers of all the disciplines and process the knowledge that I gain. I must apply the knowledge that is conducive to my own inner growth but I must be ready to share everything that I know with others without any prejudice. The fourteenth guru, O wise seeker, he addresses him as a seeker. This is the quality of a seeker. Once I saw a wild elephant being trapped, a tame female elephant in season was the bait. Sensing her presence, the wild male emerged from its domain and fell into the pit that had been cleverly concealed 
with branches and heaps of leaves. Once caught, the wild elephant was deemed to be used by others. This elephant is my fourteenth guru because he taught me to be careful with my passions and desires. Worldly charms arouse our sensory impulses and while chasing after the sense cravings, the mind gets trapped and enslaved even though it is powerful. Your fifteenth Guru Sir, the deer is the fifteenth Guru. With its keen sense of hearing, it listens intently and is wary of all noises, but it lured to its doom by the melody of the deer hunter's flu. Like the deer, we keep our ears alert for every bit of news, rumor and gossip and are skeptical about much that we hear. But we become spellbound by certain words which due to our desires, attachments, cravings and subtle impressions from the past we delight to hear. This tendency creates misery for others and ourselves. Who is your sixteenth guru? The fish who swallows a baited hook and is caught by the fisherman. This world is like a bait. As long as I remember the episode of the fish, I remain free of the hook. Who is your seventeenth guru? A prostitute who knows that she does not love her customers nor do they love her yet she waits for them and when they come enacts the drama of love she isn't satiated with the artificial love she gives and receives not with the payment she is given I realize that all human beings are like prostitutes and the world like the customer is enjoying us. The payment is always inadequate and we feel dissatisfied. Thus I became determined to live like a prostitute. Thus I become determined not to live like a prostitute. Instead I live with dignity, self-respect not expecting this world to give me either material or internal satisfaction, but to myself by going deep within the recess of my being. Who is your eighteenth Guru? My eighteenth Guru is a little bird who was flying with a worm in its beak. Larger birds flew after him and began pecking him. They stopped only when the little bird dropped the womb. Thus I learned that the secret of survival lies in renunciation, not in possession. The more you possess, the people try to grab from you. Who is your nineteenth Guru, sir? My nineteenth guru is the baby that cries when it is hungry and stops when it suckles at its mother's breasts. When the baby is full, it stops feeding and nothing its mother does can in induce it to take more milk. I learn from this baby to demand only when I really need. When it is provided, I must take only what I require and then turn my face away. And your twentieth Guru, a young woman whom I met when I was begging for arms. She told me to wait while she prepared a meal. Her bracelets jangled as she cooked, so she removed one but the noise continued. 
So she took off all her bracelets one by one until only one remained. Then there was silence. Thus I learned that wherever there is a crowd, there is a noise, disagreement and dissension. Peace can be expected only in solitude of your being and your 21st Guru, a snake that makes no hole for itself, but who rests in holes other creatures have abandoned, or curls up in the hollow of a tree for a while and then moves on. From this snake I learned to adjust myself to my environment and enjoy the resources of nature without encumbering myself with a permanent home. Creatures in nature move constantly, continually, abandoning their previous dwellings. Therefore, while floating along the current of nature, I find plenty of places to rest. Once I am rested, I move on. You look into your life how many places you have lived so far. The world is like a big caravan, caravan sarai, the guest house, where we come to spend a little time and then we move on. And your 22nd Guru? My 22nd Guru is an arrow maker who was so absorbed in shaping his arrow heads that the king and his entire army passed without attracting his attention. Thus I learned from the arrow maker to be absorbed in the task at hand. No matter how big or small, the more one pointed my focus, the greater my absorption, and the greater my absorption, the more subtle my awareness. The goal is subtle and can only be grasped by subtle awareness. There are different ways of narrating this. I have given the example of the bird catcher. The situation of the bird catcher and the arrow maker is the same. Your 23rd Guru. My 23rd Guru is a little spider who built itself a nice cozy web when a larger spy, when a larger spy, sorry, when a larger spider chased it, rushed to take refuge in its web, but it ran so fast that it got entangled and was swallowed by the bigger one. Thus, I learned that we create webs for ourselves by trying to build a safe haven, and as we race along the of these webs, we become entangled and are consumed. There is no safety to be found in the complicated webs of our actions. And who is your 24th Guru? My 24th Guru is a worm who was caught by a songbird and placed on its nest. As the bird began singing, the worm became so absorbed in the song that it lost all awareness and all awareness of its peril. Watching this little creature, I became absorbed in a song in the face of death, reminded me that I too must develop the art of listening so that I may become absorbed in the eternal soul, the nod that is always echoing deep within me. Listening to the young boy Dattatri, the king realized that the wisdom of this sage flowed from his determination to keep the goal of life firmly fixed in its in his awareness and from his ability to find the teachings everywhere he turned, from everyone. 
everyone has a capacity to teach us something or the other, provided we are disciple. That is the meaning of disciple, one who has learned the art of learning. He can learn from anything that one sees around.